Well, I've got a few things here for Metal Bay. Let's check them out. It's your first time here, don't forget to click like and subscribe. Helps the channel out. Alright, I confess, I've opened this one up already. Reason being, I needed some of these. And I was actually waiting for them. So, what we've got is a range of different PTCs. So I've got some from 900 milliamps up to 5 amps, which is the big ones over here. So I've used these 900 milliamp ones in a project, which I can show you. Beauty. So this is the project I've been building. I did a sponsorship video with PCB Way for this to get this board made. So I designed the board. They manufactured the board for me, and I populated the board. There we go. All right. So there's the PTC modules sitting there. I've got two of them there and there. And they're just on the power supply section there, obviously. That's what they're for. Yeah, so we'll see that in a future video, very soon. I'm still working through some bugs on this. I, it kind of works. I can get this thing to... Um, I will talk about it in the next video, I suppose. Oh, no, let's give you a teaser. Let's give you a teaser. So, this is a LoRa gateway, LoRa to Wi-Fi gateway, which I built. And here is the... This is the original board that was in it, this one here. This is my original vision, or vision 2, I think it is. And I did a video on this at the time, some time ago. Maybe I'll link it in or something. And this will basically bridge between the LoRa network using LoRa modules, which are inside this box here, and Wi-Fi on the ESP32. So I can send data between the remote devices on the LoRa network and the internet, or web server, which is what's actually being used for. That's that. But I always wanted to have a LAN version instead. So this time I've got a LAN adapter. But I'm having some problems getting it working. It's been a bit of a pain. So I can actually get the network to communicate. So I can do with an Ethernet cable plugged in. I can communicate with the internet and actually get like the time, NTP time. That works. But it seems that when I've got the Ethernet module enabled, you know, in the actual software, the ESP32, it locks the serial ports. I mean, they're getting blocked or something. I can't talk to the computer can't get any serial feedback on the computer and the lower modules which are also using serial are also not communicating it's just not being seen so it's almost as though there's some kind of conflict between the ESP32 Ethernet system and the serial system so I'm trying to figure out what's causing that right now so that would be another interesting video anyway yeah digression so I actually did some testing on these when I got them and these 900 milliamp the PTCs, I had them running at about 1.5 amps or so for a couple of minutes and it was fine. So you can actually overload them a little bit for a period of time. I think when I went up to about 1.7 amps or so, then you saw the voltage changing a bit and you can actually then, you can see them starting to change and then suddenly they shit the latched and you had to turn the power back off again to get them to reset. So they work fine. Should I show you? I think I should just show you, shouldn't I? So if I remember rightly, these are rated at 30 volts, I think. So anyway, we'll, I'll drop this down, so I don't want to use too much power. Let's just do 10 volts, that's fine. And what we're going to do is hook this across the actual output of the power supply. There you go, just across there. And we'll turn the power supply on. So you can see I'm running 10 volts at 1 amp. So this will provide the constant current. Voltage will collapse, it will set a constant current. Okay. So this is a 900 milliamp PTC, so it's going to sit there at one amp for many hours, I expect. Okay, so you can see it's capped the voltage about 17, 170 millivolts, I should say. All right, so it's actually wind the voltage up. Oh, sorry, wind the current up a bit. So if we go 1.5 amps, and you can see that the current, the voltage has crept up slightly because obviously the resistance is causing a drop across the actual PTC, and you can see. It's still kind of handling it. Now these things, I don't know what the actual ratings are for the time delay on these. If it's you know half an hour or whatever, I'm not sure. I did do testing on these being overcurrented slightly for about half an hour, and they stayed on just fine. The main thing I was worried about is was full stripping. I definitely didn't want full stripping. Cut up slightly. Let's just give it a little bit more. 1.6 amps. 1.7. Let's do 1.7 amps. If this voltage goes shooting up, then it's uh, it's clamped and disconnected. You see, it will creep. No, let's go 1.8 amps. Let's go slightly more. 
I just want to show you what actually does. A bit slower than I'd like. Give it more. I'll put 9 amps. I don't want to over it too much, or over it too much, because I don't want to be a rapid response. I want it to be a bit of a slow response so you can see it. So you can see the voltage is starting to creep up, which means the resistance of the PTC is increasing. It's pretty warm. It's probably about 70 or 80 degrees, I'm guessing. Because I touched it, it cooled it down a bit. <laughs> Acted like a heat sink. This is what ambient temperature matters with these things. If you've got a breeze going across it, it'll be much less likely to trip. Come on. Yeah, we're starting to see some progression now. Any second now, it's going to trip. There we go, tripped out. So now we've got full voltage, and it's limiting it to about 90 to 100 milliamps and that's in a trip state okay if I turn it off leave it off for a few seconds give it a chance to cool a little bit do it again see so it's tripped there you go it trips out again so even when the trip is still maintaining a current of some kind it isn't completely dead so that's something you need to bear in mind Let's see what's in this one It's a remote control. Now I showed one of these not long ago and I wasn't particularly happy with the quality of it. I mean it worked, but it just didn't seem as nice as the one I had before. Now this is the one I've had before. Like, this is this came exactly the same packaging as this with a little pouch and everything. And the one I purchased which had RC6 across the front, uh, it looks the same, the quality isn't the same. It's not the same manufacturer and that sort of stuff, it's just a, a clone of what this one is. And so this one here was also an RC6 because it's actually what the what Roma control is actually called. Right? So this is not the same manufacturer because the mouldings are different, but it's very similar. So if I pull this tab out, this should now work with my camera. Let me just push a button. That's currently set to photo. We try one. Or maybe not. Is there a battery in there? <laughs> so it's got a CR2025 battery in there. Maybe it's flat. It shouldn't be. No, battery's fine. 3.3 volts. Put that back in again. I should be able to take a photo whilst it's recording. Hmm, okay, well, let's, try, let's stop recording. Hmm, that's interesting. Well, that is working. I just tried it, it just took a photo, and I'm recording now by pushing the button on this remote, so this remote is working. So, this is better quality than the other one I picked up. Um, it is still different to this one, which I'm really happy with. So, no, they're extremely similar, but they're definitely different. I mean, the infrared remotes on the end here, look, you see the difference for a start. Yeah, this one seems a bit harder to actually get to be seen by the camera. We'll see, here it goes. And it's the paper that comes with it, which actually looks like it's a, an original Canon. So, maybe it's a good clone, I don't know, or maybe they've got a different manufacturer, or who knows. But yeah, that's all the information about how to use it, which I don't need because I don't know how to use it, but um, yeah, that's better than the last one. It was also more expensive, but you know, yeah. Don't forget to click like and subscribe. Thanks to my supporters, if you to support me via Patreon or through YouTube memberships or even donated via PayPal. It's one or two people do that from time to time. Thank you all for helping me. Helps me to buy things for the video. So these are some lure modules.
60 by E32s. These are 433 megahertz versions. So I've got some A68 megahertz, 915 megahertz, and some 433 megahertz as well now. So I thought I'd get some of these in case I'm finding congestion with the channels I'm trying to use, or if I need to do a different function without interfering with anything else. So I thought I'd get a few of them. Three though. Hmm. I actually got six. I don't know. Maybe. I've still got a big box to come yet, which I have already opened because I had to make sure it was what I thought it was. this? Well, it's a twofer. I need to uh, stop and come back. So we've got some bonus packages. Let's try and get into this box somehow. Oh, excellent. So, I'm hoping this is the right thing. This is a test fixture for an LCR meter. So I got this for my East Tester, because there's actually another brand which looks identical Came across it recently. I think it's because I was writing the scripts, the control scripts for the uh, test controller software, which is on EV Blog Forum. And I was writing control scripts for this thing, and someone else mentioned a different brand, which is basically identical. Well, I think I went looking for that brand or something to go and find out more information about it, and I found it's a test fixture, which I thought, well, that's interesting because. It's got tweezers instead of the other system, which is just the dual crocodile clip things, you know. This might be better suited to some things I'm doing. So let's just see if it actually fits first. I'll let you know. So there you go. Good capacitor. Let's just test it. So you across there. 22 microfarads. That's exactly what a capacitor is. So what I normally use are these things. You know, like that. Which is okay, but sometimes you try to do something in circuit or you don't want to be messing around with the crocodile clips. So I've got this. So this might also fit on my HP. I've got a HP LCR meter. Is it 4261? Is it? I can't remember what the actual model number is now. I put that ages ago in a video and that's currently sitting in my other lab in a drawer. I haven't actually used this so I've repaired it to be honest. That might even fit on there. And normally these test features for these meters or LCR meters in general, they're extremely expensive. They're many hundreds of dollars. Now these weren't actually that expensive. So they are Kelvin leads, but looks like they are coming right up to here, to where these tips are, which are screwed on. So yeah, they are Kelvin leads. Looking pretty good. And there you go, there it is installed. So you basically have these two levers here, which I used to lock it in. So you head them to the left. Those are on these BNC connectors, and now the other ones are just push in. So they just push in like that, leave them over, easy as that, very nice, that's actually much better than I swap clips, I think I still get a lot more use, excellent. Let's see what's in here. Okay. These are some generic cables for doing car audio stuff. Now this is actually meant for a Toyota car. Now I mentioned that my in-laws are going to Australia and I'm buying their old car from them because it's better than my current car, um, somewhat newer. And the stereo is the original factory stereo and I want to change it. So I'm just sort of getting bits and pieces together when I do replace that stereo. Now I don't actually have a stereo coming apparently we'll see it's supposed to be a sponsorship item we'll see if that turns up okay or not who knows it's actually a returned to amazon stock item so we'll see if it's even complete it made but missing bits it may not even work who knows we'll find out but anyway so this is just an adapter which is for generic stereotypes it must be like an iso standard for these connectors it allows adapter to toyota cars in the various that's the standard 
speakers power. Uh, this will be that's a, that'd be rear speakers. Although there's extra connections on there, maybe it's not rear speakers. That's some kind of antenna connection. Yeah, there's an antenna connection. It's like a coaxial plug. Interesting. You've seen mine before. So it'd be probably antenna and remote. Uh, this one here is probably CAN bus, or well, this one's CAN bus for steering wheel control. Yeah, I'd, I think they might both be actually. They're both. Yeah, they've both got the same wires, so it's different connectors. It depends which connector you got in there, I suppose. But, uh, yeah. So that'd be a project when I get the stereo, once I actually take ownership of the car. They're still here, they haven't left. Can't go to Australia yet, no flights out. So. Once they go and I take this in the car and I've got the stereo arrived and I'll be doing a project, I'll be doing a video on this probably with that stereo installation and showing that. Right, one more thing to check. One more box. Right, got this FedEx box. Now this is a bit of a spoiler I suppose for something that's coming. Well hopefully it actually arrives, it hasn't arrived yet. I ordered these after the other thing anyway. So I managed to find a set of original manuals for the 3561A. So I was quite lucky there. Fairly expensive to buy, but so volume one and volume two of the service manual. And you also have the operating manual as well. So that's excellent. So a quick look at the operating manual. So it's all original. Tells you the user thing, which is great because I've got no idea. Not any pictures. I like pictures. I'm a picture person, really. <laughs> so that's the operating manual. Service manual volume one. Um, for isolation, performance test, adjustments, replaceable parts, back dating, so revisions. So it's got for isolation, which is obviously diagnostics kind of stuff, which is handy as well. That's nice. And volume two, I believe, has got the diagrams in it. Now, I do actually find an electronic version of this as well, so I do actually have an electronic version of the manual. But you know, I also like to get physical manuals where possible. So one piece of layout and blocks, and there we go. There's some circuit diagram stuff there. Nice, really readable. That's good. So, obviously, what this means is that I have a HP 3561A on the way. Well, I do. The only trouble is, it ain't arrived yet. <laughs> and it's been a month. Getting concerned. Its shipping status hasn't changed in a month. I'm hoping it's just on a ship somewhere on the way over, taking its time getting here. But to no scan to a month is getting a bit concerning. It better arrive because I actually paid a reasonable price for it. It's actually quite a good price I paid. I actually posted it during one of my live streams. I was doing a live stream and I was I mentioned it that on the joined live stream that I was looking at one of these things. And I was sitting there thinking, no, I'm gonna buy one. I'm just gonna buy it. And so I bought it in the live stream. Of course the price looked reasonable and the condition looked reasonable. So I went for it. Let's hope I don't regret it. Don't forget to like, subscribe if you've not been here before, give us a thumbs up. That's what the click like means. I'll catch you next one. Bye.